Hey, this is Keith Wallen from Breaking Benjamin. You're listening to Vulgar Display of Podcasts and KLMZ The Zone. Welcome to the Vulgar Display of Podcasts and KLMZ The Zone. You got the mocks here, and I'm joined with a special guest online right now. We have Keith Wallen from Breaking Benjamin and also Keith Wallen, the solo act. Keith, how are you, man? I'm good. It's funny. It's like I have a, I have a split personality with that uh, intro. <laughs> yeah, you got you to gotta know which one you are, right? Sometimes I don't even know which one I am. <laughs> <laughs> right. You got a new solo album coming out. I know you've put a couple out before, but May 3rd from Rise Records, Infinity Now. Got a couple singles out right now. Tell us a little bit about the record. Yeah, man, this is, uh, this is my second solo album. Super excited to have an amazing partnership with Rise Records this time around. So I've been super excited to get these new songs out. Yeah, it's a little bit of everything, man. Um, I, I think uh, it was uh, really, truly inspired by a... Uh, you're going to find this interesting, maybe. Um, inspired by an ayahuasca trip that oh, I had a few okay. years back. Okay. Yeah, it, uh, I, I kind of just, you know, sat down, had this experience with this with this drug, and uh, I saw all kinds of things, man. It was uh, it was pretty wild. You know, I'm usually not a big drug person, but, you know, I've kind of heard some good things about DMT and ayahuasca and how it can be therapeutic in, in, uh, in a lot of different ways cases and applications you know so i was curious enough to give it a whirl not not saying that i advocate for drug use in any way but uh yeah and i'm not a doctor but (laughs) just disclaimer disclaimer (laughs) yeah yeah but yeah man it was um it was really just kind of a real just journey inside myself and outside myself and and, in the universe Uh, i know this kind of sounds out there but uh it was a real journey and so a lot of a lot of things that i kind of saw and experienced during that whole thing. Um, you know, I kind of tapped into during the writing process for this album and tried to focus on various different kind of things that I saw. And uh, obviously the album's called Infinity Now. I have a song called Infinity uh, that is the uh, opening track of the album and kind of the, the you know, the title track, if you will. And uh, yeah, lots of lots of inspiration from that uh that trip that went into that song for sure. I mean, if you heard the song, if you heard that song, you're definitely like, oh yeah, this guy's definitely taking some uh, psychedelics. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and then a, a few other songs in there, really personal song about my father. It's called Dear Father. Um, some things I, I kind of experienced during that trip, you know, really kind of made me just really, I don't know, you kind of come away from that, you know, really feeling like, man, we are all just connected, you know, through through life and death. And uh, you, know, you hope that, you know, some loved ones that that uh, that aren't around anymore, you know, you're hoping that they're still they're still there. You know, they're still kind of kind of keeping an eye on you through space and time or, or however or whatever it is, you know. So so I kind of drew inspiration from that and, and, and kind of wrote about that for that song. And then there's a few other different songs in there that are kind of uh, all across the spectrum there. But uh, but yeah, man, I'm excited. Talking about one of the singles that's released and the video, Headspace Holiday. I got, I'm going to quote you here. Life can stress you out, and there's a lot of bad news on the TV more often than not. Headspace Holiday is about just that, the need for a mental escape from all of life's noise. Tell us a little bit about writing Head, Headspace Holiday and uh, what it means to you. Yeah, I mean, that pretty much sums it up, you know. Uh, you know, there's there's every time you turn on the TV, there's something bad or something awful happening. And, uh, you know, not not saying that, you know, we need to run away from those things, you know, but uh, sometimes it can just be very overwhelming to uh, to your mental health and, and, you know, for sheer just, you know, uh, protective purposes, you know, because sometimes you got to just shut your brain off a little bit, you know, whether that means, whether that means, you know, uh, pouring yourself into art and music. And, you know, I mean, that's what I do. I, I try to realize that's, that, that is my escape is music. And, and I try to, uh, I try to provide uh, an escape for other people too. You know, there's so much, 
there's so much stuff on the news that's whether it's bad news or just, you know, all kinds of different agendas one way or the other politically and all this stuff, you know, I just want to be the escape from, from all that, all that stuff. And, uh, and just enjoy it for what it is. And that's, and that's just music, you know? So, yeah. And I would say of the ones I've heard from this record, if you're a fan, you know, if you're listening to this and you're a fan of your other band, Breaking Benjamin, I think you're going to like it a lot. There's a ton of groove in it. Sounds like there's a little bit like down tuned guitars, a little bit of a hanger and uh, like a headbanger and even like a breakdown at the end, which is as a metalhead is always kind of nice. With your solo stuff, is there a little bit more creative freedom? Do you get to express yourself in ways that maybe you don't with Breaking Benjamin? Uh, absolutely. You know, Breaking Benjamin has a, has a sound. Yeah, we have a distinct kind of thing that, you know, the band's kind of established over the years. So we, we don't stray too far away from that. But, uh, but, you know, we add little sprinkles of, of different stuff there with, with some of these new songs. But with my stuff, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of a, a way for me to kind of say what I want to say and really do what I want and have full control. And, uh, but, you know, and also uh, the reason why, uh, the main reason why I have this kind of second, secondary avenue to make music is, is, is primarily because, you know, I know there's going to be one day when I'm old as hell and I, I can't really play guitar anymore and I won't be able to sing the same. And I want to just look back and, and, and just know that like, Hey man, while I was able to do it, I made as much music as I possibly could while I was alive on this planet. So that's really my main, my main reason, you know, I just want to make as much music uh, as much, much as I can before I die. So, yeah. <laughs> And, and I would say you stay pretty busy. You've collaborated with some massive artists. You know, I'd say one of the most notably is is uh, Corn. you know, uh, Head from Corn and uh, Fuel. And We Came as Romans and even, you know, Dorothy, which is a band that I love. Uh, tell us about some of your collaborations and how that influences maybe your own songwriting. Yeah, it's kind of a different thing. I mean, every every different, you know, band or artist that uh, that I work with. Um, and, 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 and that being said, you know, some of these people that that you mentioned, they they definitely don't need my help at all. They are absolutely <laughs> amazingly talented people. So any kind of, I have an opportunity to to collab and work work with uh, uh, other just artists, you know, I really jump at the chance. But yeah, people like Dorothy, I mean, she's just phenomenal. I mean, a phenomenal talent, amazing voice, um, just great songs, you know, all the above, the, the total package, you know, just really just great and great live show too. amazing band. Yeah. Working with head. That was another just absolute, just pinch me moment. You know, uh, yeah. I've been such a fan of corn and, and, and Brian and, and just like everything that he's, he's, you know, gone through his story is just absolutely incredible. And just, you know, through Jason, our, our other guitar, guitar player at breaking Ben, Jason Rao, he's, he, he produced some of the, the first couple uh, love and death songs and like their first album. And so, yeah, it was kind of, uh, it was a cool connection there. Um, and he kind of brought me in to kind of try my hand to see if we could, you know, come up with some songs for their new album. And, and it was just an unbelievable honor and a thrill to, to work in any capacity, uh, with, with head. And, uh, yeah, man, he's, he's such a talented dude and, and, and a great guy. And, uh, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Plus, you know, we all we really worked on that during the pandemic, during COVID. Uh, so, you know, it really was a, a headspace a holiday, if you will, no, just you from <laughs> what was happening in the world. You know, it was great to work on music and kind of keep my mind on uh, on something cool like that. So, And I know you just got off basically playing double duty where you were the tour support for your own band, right? You would come out and maybe even open with some acoustic songs <laughs> and even debuting, you know, some of your material, uh, some of your solo material. I'm just curious even about the logistics of that, uh, you know, kind of walk us through what double pulling a double duty show is like for you. Yeah, that, that's exactly it. Yeah. I, uh, Ben oftentimes he jokes around about it. He's like, Oh hell yeah. You, you opened for yourself. How was that? You know, <laughs> right. He kind of teased, he kind of teased me a bit, but, uh, but man, it's, uh, it's, it's awesome. You know, um, it, it, it's definitely a lot of work. Um, it's, uh, I'd say a, a day in the life of one of those double duty days is, you know, we, we have a VIP sound check too with breaking Ben. So between that, my show, and the Break of Benjamin show, it's like three shows a day, it, it feels like. Jeez. Uh, wow. But I, I, I love it, though. You know, I, you know, you'll never hear me complain because, you know, I've wanted to do this my whole life. And, and the fact that I'm absolutely getting to live my dream every day 
uh, it's just, it's incredible. So how did the crowds respond to that? You did a lot of the songs acoustic, right? I did. It was, uh, it was an acoustic tour for breaking Ben. So oh, gotcha. Gotcha. I, I think, I think as an, as an opener, I wanted to kind of keep that same theme and just and play uh, acoustic also. But, you know, that being said, I, I feel like, you know, the, these shows with breaking Benjamin, I try not to do them too often because, you know, I don't want it to seem like, I'm just riding these coattails and I'm just like kind of a tag along thing. You know, I, I very much want my music to represent itself and to, to whatever kind of success or whatever kind of progress I want it to be on its own merit. You know, I try not to say, Hey, you know, this is Keith Wallen or, or from breaking Benjamin, you know, I want to eventually be able to not have to say that, but yeah. at this point, that's how people know me. And, you know, and, and I understand so, but, you know, trying to get my name out there as, as my own kind of thing. And, and obviously still very much involved with Breaking Ben. I mean, we're, we've been working on this uh, new album for a bit and uh, yeah, working on that today, actually. So I, I try to try to keep those things separate, but you know, when, when the offer comes in and they're like, Hey, Breaking Benjamin is going on tour. There's a few shows where we need a, a different opener or whatever. Would you do it? You know, you can't say no, you know, you can't say no to that because you know, you want to get in front of many, as many people as you can. So I'm just grateful. I'm grateful for both things. And uh, I'm so just thrilled that both of these things are just firing on all cylinders. And uh, and I can't thank you enough for, for having me, giving me a platform to talk about it. <laughs> Absolutely. We're digging these songs. I want to get talk about another one, Your uh, another uh, single that you released with a video, Strings. This one has yeah. a a little bit more, I think, of an atmospheric vibe to it. Very catchy. Um, you know, all your stuff is very catchy, w- written just really solidly. I think for fans listening, you know, it gives me sort of like a 20 seconds to Mars kind of feel. Tell us a little bit about Strings. I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's uh, that's the first one that came out from this new batch of songs. And um, I, I really wanted something to have, you know, something with some, with some high energy. And, you know, I, I love that drum beat kind of a, a Jimmy Eat World inspired drum beat there from the sweetness. But yeah, man, it's, uh, yeah, just kind of come out firing, come out with some energy, you know, and that song, the song really is about just, you know, think for yourself, you know, have, have uh, the freedom of thought and, you know, nothing's going to hold me back, tie me down, you know? So yeah, I thought that was a cool, cool message and, and, a, and a high energy song and a good one to come out of the gates with. Getting into Breaking Benjamin a little bit, you guys are going out on tour, and we're going to be catching you at Black Oak Amphitheater at Table Rock Lake in Lampy, Missouri, a killer venue, April 24th, 7 p.m. But that is uh, also this year you're going to be playing the Incarceration Fest in Ohio. What is playing a festival versus playing maybe some of the smaller intimate shows that you play? You know, how do those two compare or how do they contrast? Yeah, I mean, uh, honestly, I I go through uh, between Breaking Benjamin and, and between uh, that and my my solo stuff. I go through the the complete spectrum of playing, you know, these outdoor amphitheaters and arenas and festivals uh, with Breaking Ben to sometimes playing really smaller, intimate places with my solo music. You know, the goal is to try to get that to. Uh, <laughs> the solo stuff to the arenas also. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, but, but right, but right now, you know, it's kind of smaller rooms, but, but I love it. It's, it's so cool to kind of have that, uh, that different uh, just kind of spectrum, you know, and then just go back and forth, you know, vice versa, but it's great. You know, I, I love the big shows. I love the shows that are kind of more small or more intimate uh, and all the shows in between. It's just, it's just a blast to just have that, energy exchange with with the crowd and, and i mean with breaking band i mean gosh when they're singing back the songs i mean it's 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 incredible man it's a, it's an incredible feeling and uh you know and i, I could pretty much speak for the rest of the band that to, to be able to still be doing this i mean even though I've, I've been in the band for about 10 years now the band's been around for over 20 to be able to kind of go anywhere in this country and have fans show up like that and sing the song back. I mean, it's just, a, it's a real honor and, uh, and, and privilege to be a part of it. And you've played with some massive bands. I mean, the biggest in the world, even a few years ago, you had a tour with Alice in Chains, which just gets the stamp of approval from Vulgar Display, a podcast here. When you, when you tour and, and play shows with bands that are just icons, are you able to take away some something from that? Are you able to learn from them or from the experience in general? Absolutely. Um, always, you know, if, if, if nothing else, uh, just, 
how to how to treat other bands uh just with you know the utmost respect i mean uh, that was just an absolute just dream come true to be able to to be on a tour with alice and chains i mean since i was like younger i mean in childhood uh, you know they, they've been such heroes to me and, and to be able to share the stage with them and and even on the days off you know me me and jerry we we you know went and played golf a couple times and oh wow i mean it was it, dude it was amazing you know <laughs> Just you're, the you're sitting there oh you're sitting there trying to you know drive off the number one tee and you know you're one of your music heroes is sitting there watching you drive you know it's like, talk about some pressure <laughs> yeah yeah I can uh, imagine. yeah needless to say i shanked a few in the woods that day but uh <laughs> But man, I mean, uh, 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 just complete, just, you know, core memory unlocked. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll keep that, that whole tour just uh, in my memory and in my heart forever. I mean, it was just incredible. And they're just the nicest guys and so good, still just absolutely on top of their game. They sound great uh, every, every night. Uh, yeah. I got to ask you, how was Jerry's game? Did he shoot it pretty well? Jerry's got a real golf game, I got to tell you. And he's, yeah, he's not messing around on that course. There you go. He's, he's got, yeah, he's got, he's got all the tools. <laughs> yeah. All the swings, the short game, everything. It's great. And I would, uh, I guess, liken myself as a golfer as well. Although my wife probably has other ideas about that, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's, uh, you know, that's something I enjoy. It's, uh, it's almost like a stress reliever, sort of mental health thing for me to go out on the course. Now, sometimes it goes the other way, right? Where you do get some shanks oh, and yeah. you get super pissed off or whatever, but yeah, that's something we enjoy as well. Yeah, man, it, it really is just a, an amazing, uh, just escape, you know, even, even if, even if I am out there just like you know, burning the worms and you know, <laughs> yeah. hitting the trees, you know, it's always just a beautiful day. And, you know, you got to just be grateful for that and just to be out there and get some exercise. So, man, I love it. Yeah. Well, when you're down at a uh, Black Oak Amphitheater at Table Rock Lake, Tiger Woods' only golf course at this point is open down there. It's called Payne's Valley. I'm not sure if you've seen it or not. I 100% recommend it. It is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, man, I, I would love that. That sounds awesome. A uh, little bit of a gearhead here. What kind of gear are you taking out, you know, on this upcoming tour? Is it uh, the same? Do you always kind of run with the same stuff? Or tell us a little bit about what you're running with. Yeah, I keep my things pretty simple, man. Um, and, you know, a lot of a lot of guitar players, they're constantly tweaking. Uh, and, you know, there's a little bit of that. You know, we, we use a lot of these kind of uh, more modern day kind of uh, amp modelers. Yeah, we, we use Fractal Axe Effects. And so we're on Axe Effects 3 right now. And you know, they're releasing updates all the time. And every time you update, you know, there's a whole new just array of toys and things to just mess with. I mean, you could you could really get lost inside of it for hours. Uh, but I, I try not to do that. I try to kind of get it to a point where I'm like, man, you know what? I think this sounds good. And I just kind of leave it alone. And then, you know, that gives me more time to kind of focus on getting uh, more guitars, new guitars. So <laughs> yeah, as long as, the, as long as the amps work, and then I can just change what uh, what I'm playing through it. So one of the hot topics that people are talking about right now is, and maybe it affects bands that aren't quite on the level that you guys are, but the merch cuts and how that affects bands and touring and like the business of being in a band. Do you have any opinion on some of that stuff? Well, I think obviously that, um, you know, look, this has been, this has been going on to the, since the beginning of, you know, musicians and entertainment, you know, um, we're, we're constantly trying to market ourselves and, 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 you know, sell, merchandise the best we can you know and i think it's become harder and harder to be a musician these days with you know with the advent of streaming and you know there's there's just you know a different kind of outlet as far as to get get music to people you know the physical physical cds and all that stuff tapes have all gone away i mean i think vinyls kind of made a little bit of a comeback which is cool to see but uh, a lot of it's on streaming and you know and there's a, a not a very good percentage for the musicians so a lots of times the only way we can kind of uh survive is through bark sales and and getting out there and touring so when you know something else is kind of putting their hand in the cookie jar to take their cut it's, it's hard it's hard to kind of you know handle that a little bit but uh but you know it's uh you know COVID made it really hard for a lot of these venues and stuff to survive too you know the ones that did make it through you know, they're, they're kind of, I'm sure, thinking of ways like, man, how can we prevent this from happening? How can we help help our bottom line also? So it's a, it's definitely a, uh, a conversation that needs to be uh, kind of worked through. 
do you, I mean, we're several years removed from COVID at this point. Do you still feel like we're, especially in the music business and like you're talking about, do you still feel like we're trying to recover from, from those couple years? I definitely think that a lot of lessons were learned, you know, and, and I think, uh, you know, gosh, you never, you know, in this day and age, you never know what's going to happen. You never know what's going to happen. So I think a lot of people trying to just prepare. And I mean, it's not a bad idea to just to prepare for the worst. And so, you know, you can kind of handle things as it comes, but hopefully nothing bad like that ever happens again. At least I hope not. It was fucking horrible. Yeah, it was awful. This is the Vulgar Display. We're going to lighten it up here a little bit. This is the Vulgar Display of Podcast, KLMZ, The Zone. We're joined here with Keith Wallen. New album coming out, new solo album coming out, Infinity Now, May 3rd via Rise Records. And then that Breaking Benjamin, Daughtry, and Catch Your Breath Tour. It's going to be at Black Oak Amphitheater, Table Rock Lake, Lampy, Missouri, April 24th at 7 p.m. And that's actually the very last show of the tour, which is pretty interesting. You'll probably be ready to get home by that point. But we're going to catch you when you come into town, Keith. Looking forward to the rest of this record, and we're we're happy that you joined us today. Chad, thank you so much for having me, man. It's uh, it's an honor to be here, and thank you so much for all the support for for Breaking Benjamin, and and of course my solo stuff. And uh, man, looking forward to to hanging in uh, in April when we come through. Yeah, let's catch uh, eighteen holes real quick if you get if you get a little time. I know you're busy. <laughs> There we go. That sounds like a good day right there. Or a bad day, depending <laughs> on how good we're swinging it. <laughs> Absolutely, brother. We'll catch you when you get in town. Appreciate it, man. All right, man. Thank you so much.